Hey ladies, looking for a man that coordinates his water bottle with his shirt. <laughs> oh, crying. that's refreshing. Hi guys, it's Amanda here, your kitty of carnage. Hey guys, women don't find me attractive. <laughs> it's Crush. Girls like you, eventually. <laughs> Today on Channel Sundown, guys, we're a little late with posting this, but lately I've been getting a lot of my friends asking me and messaging me, and I've been kind of hesitant to talk to people about it because everyone is asking me my opinion, but in order to say my opinion, it would be spoiling. So, we decided to kind of wait a little while before we kind of jump in. But I think now that more people saw it, now we're going to go ahead and jump in to our thoughts on IT Chapter 2 Spoiler Review. We're both wearing our shining shirts because we're preparing a whole shining fiasco. If you guys don't know, shining is this guy's favorite film and book. So, but that's in the future. So this is a preview to upcoming things we have planned. She just wanted to show off her new shirt. And I want to show off her new shirt, yeah. And be like me. Yeah, the shirt you always wear all the time. I want to wear my new <laughs> shirt. And I want to be Twinkie, so there it goes. Anyways, here it goes. It, Chapter 2, Review. Let's start. As many of you guys know, It, Chapter 1, the first one, not It, Chapter 2, is one of the highest grossing horror films since, like, ever, like, counting The Exorcist and Jaws, it was really popular, and a lot of non-horror fans even love the film and seen the film, so, It, Chapter 2, had big shoes to kind of feel, so, <laughs> it's a clan, <laughs> it's a cl oh, it's a clan, oh, there you go, there it is, get out of here, so, It, Chapter 2, begins in present time, uh, actually kind of goes back the beginning of the film it goes back to the kids and their promises promise each other that they return if it ever came back and they all promised each other and everything and Bev moved away because you know everything with her father and whatnot so she he moved away she moved away to her aunts I think and everybody kind of it just kind of shows them growing older and moving away and kind of separating and Mike stays behind in the town. Everybody grows up and kind of like just <laughs> goes on to be yeah. extremely successful. Yeah, exactly. So well then it goes to present day. Present day it starts off with this fair going on, this little carnival fair. Two men, very attractive men who are in a relationship at the carnival. And unfortunately they bump into some ignorant, stupid people who just want to do violence and beat them up for their, what they call them. Their, they said for their lifestyle and their choices, and they're they're much like the uh, bullies in the first game movie. Like mm -hmm. the modern, you could you kind of see them as the modern generation of the bullies from the first game film. Exactly, seeing all that. Well, they jump them and they get pretty violent, and that was like in the non spoiler of you, like you were talking about. You're like it was pretty. You know, it pretty was very, violent yeah. and pretty early on in, into the movie. Yeah, it was really uncomfortable. It kind of made you feel for the people. Well, they throw one of the young men off the bridge, and he goes in the water, and he is saved by Pennywise. So he kind of pulls him out of the water, and his partner sees this, and then sees Pennywise, ah, his loved one, and then the balloons come, and it kind of, it's, and then the credit, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, I saw, I was, I was like, wow, this is a hell of a beginning. It kind of makes you really, it grabs you. Yes, I felt grabbed. The opening was good. I was a little confused because I was like, who are these, who are any of these people? Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out for the longest time if the, the couple, if they were like uh, supposed to be some of the kids that were growing up, you know, and I was like mm -hmm. trying to figure out which ones they were. And then I realized they weren't. They were just some random town that were uh, at the fair and stumbled upon some idiots. Mm -hmm. So after the event, the police show up to kind of investigate everything that's going on and stuff. And who is there kind of checking out the scene is older, grown-up Mike. 
and he's checking out the scene and you can he can tell right away that this is like it that it's back so after him spending all the time and Dory just you know checking out all the scenes and everything kind of keeping his eye open for it he finally goes okay he's here it is time we need to contact everybody so he gets on the horn calls all the kids and it is pretty interesting how they react i just think mike kind of wasted his life because the, we all knew it was going to be 27 years later so he spent every year like looking around like mm, one of these days it's going to happen well, and then yeah. and then you're 27 it's like oh it's happening and he's like god yeah. it's, it's happening yeah. well, he kind of like they knew it would probably be 27 and so he's kind of well why not just pay attention every year for the rest of your life it's, why not pay attention for 26 years Wasting your life away, Mike. So basically, when he calls everybody and lets everybody know, in the beginning, like, everybody reacts kind of differently. And really, when everybody answers, they're kind of like, Mike who? <laughs> they're yeah. like, oh, hey, Mike. And all of them have forgotten about everything. And, like, for example, when he says Richie, he goes, it's bad. Richie's like, and like, Bill, you know, they all kind of freeze. And Richie's throwing up. Eddie gets in a car wreck and everything, and unfortunately, we find out that Stanley, Stanley ended up committing suicide. They all kind of go their own ways and react differently. They all became very successful. Bill became Arthur, where he started writing books, and he started writing for television and for film. Richie became a famous stand-up comedian. Eddie, of course, became an insurance guy for a company, so he became a real big, like, insurance kind of dude. Insurance adjuster? There we go. Became successfully married to a guy with money. It was an abusive relationship, like her father was before, and what have you. And I'm not sure what Stanley became. I really don't remember, but before he committed suicide, I don't remember if they said what he became. They basically all became really successful, except for Mike, who wasted 26 years waiting for the clown who everyone knew was going to show up 27 years later. He could have gone somewhere and came back. Uh, I, I don't agree with that. I think that he felt he had a purpose. He had a purpose. I don't think it was wasteful. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. He had a purpose. What was that? For, to wait for Pennywise. He didn't have to wait. Everyone knew he was going to be back 27 years later. Why did he have to wait there? Wait Just the entire time. Just in case. Just in case. Like, well, well, think about when they well, all Well, luckily, went, nothing happened in those 26 years. Well, think about it. They all went away. They all forgot. So if he would have went, he would have forgot. Yeah, they could have all went away and forgotten. He would have been successful, too. <laughs> and then the clown would still came back and killed the kids. <laughs> Good thing they stopped him, though. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to get to that point. I don't agree with Mr. Crush, but that's his opinion, so there we go. So basically, after he calls and he tells everybody to come on, they all come about to Dury and me, and they kind of reconnect and stuff. And that scene, you actually see them all kind of like connecting like they used to back in the day, as well as some really um, interesting uh, CGI effects. Oh, yeah, because they all start seeing stuff. I yeah. Yeah. A shake that comes out of a, out of a, an egg with a baby head and whatever. That that's when I, you know, I kind of like that. I like that scene when they were mm -hmm. hallucinating and then when the stuff started coming out of the eggs. That's that was the first time I got like a. Remember, in my, if you mm -hmm. if you've seen the uh, it chapter two review that we did, I, say, I talk about a lot of uh, that. The, it had a lot of Tim Burton kind of feel to it. That's when the Tim Burtonness started happening for me is when the eggs started cracking all the weird little creatures started coming out yeah. I was just like I don't know when I when I say that because I said the movie was very e uneven and I mean that because some of it some of it reminded me of Tim Burton some of it reminded me of David Cronenberg some of it reminded me of the first Ant movie it was just like almost like it was just directed by different people I don't yeah. know after their meal and stuff some of them decide I'm not going to stick around so some of them kind of like go about and they're like I'm going to leave I'm not going to stay. I'm not going to do this. And uh, Bill goes with Mike and uh, has a, a sip, a cocktail with Mike. And Mike decides to uh, put a little something in his tea. 
and tell Bill in detail and in hallucination form how they plan on defeating Pennywise. That was pretty interesting. <laughs> They're having like this in like deal and he basically describes about this tribe done this ritual to like basically destroy Pennywise and he was trying to tell them how he believes they can just each come with a token and defeat the Pennywise like the tribe did before which honestly I didn't really get all that because if they <laughs> defeated Pennywise why is he back? So yeah. I never really understood that. Definitely felt like he was leaving something out. I kind of enjoyed that scene the hallucinogenic effects but I, the CGI was there was a lot of CGI in there. I don't know it was a very hit or miss scene mm -hmm. for me. It was kind of cool but then it also didn't explain a whole lot, but it looked yeah. interesting, but there was also way too much CGI. Each person in the Losers Club needs to come up with a token from the past, which symbolizes basically a defeat of Pennywise. And each, each person has their own token. So basically, after spending the first 30 minutes of this long movie to get everyone together in one cohesive group, they then, once they finally agreed to come together, they then immediately split them up to all go find these tokens. When Bev goes to get her token, you guys might have seen the IT trailer where Bev goes to her old uh, apartment where she used to live with her dad and the lady that lived there, the crazy lady, oh you never really die, like ugh. Anyways, you guys might remember the trailer. She lived there and stuff. And you end up, she morphs into a creature and, and you find out that that place, after she goes up there and she finds it and she leaves and stuff, you find out, wow, the place is actually abandoned. It's an abandoned warehouse. But anyways, that scene was really cool. I liked that scene a lot. So that was kind of like, the that was kind of a scene I was like, all right, here it goes. So, oh, you mean the best scene in the movie was that scene that everyone saw in the trailer? I agree. After getting all their tokens, they all end up going to the house, the mystery, the, cra the crazy house where Pennywise lives. Well, they get there into the house, and of course they had the scary, not scary, not, was oh, like yeah. scary, really scary, not scary at all, three doors. And uh, they get there and they find out that, you know, you know, just go, you know, they're in the, they were in the house the first film. Well, basically, they find out that Pennywise lives way under. So he, they kind of go down and they find where he is with all their tokens. And they're there, so they're ready to do this mess. They're ready to do the damn thing. <laughs> and by this point in the movie, you're ready for them to do the damn thing, too. They start the fire and they start doing the whole little ritual thing. And they're just like, oh, here's our tokens. And they throw it in the fire and they all start doing their little thing. Well, all of a sudden, things start getting weird. Noises start happening. Things start going awry. Well, you kind of find out that the first tribe that did the exercises, the reason why Pennywise is still around is because they didn't succeed. They all died. And Mike did <clears throat> not want to share this information. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's another thing I didn't understand. If he knew that they all died when they tried to stop them, then why would he even try to stop them again knowing thinking they were all going to die? He thought it was different because they believed. Because if you guys remember in the first film, like he was like, I believe, and then it destroyed him. So their belief got him and stuff. And we're going to revisit that when we talk about the end. But he thought their belief was going to make it work. Or maybe he was just tired of living in Deary for the like, last 27 years and he was ready to die because he was jealous because everyone else was successful he wasted mm. his life living in this crappy town and he wanted to die and he wanted all his friends to die after doing the whole exercise they didn't really like make it and they all were like what's going on we're confused and you know they're all like upset with mike because they're like you didn't tell us that you know we weren't going to be able to do this right and everything so anyways they come down to it uh, they start fighting and they start getting their belief aspect. They started getting brave and you know earlier in the film Bev gave a spear thing and told him here this will kill the creature if you believe it will. 
So during the whole chaos of them running around and, you know, what have you, Eddie grabs the spear and stabs it, and it stabs him, and he believes in everything. Well, unfortunately, it gets Eddie pretty kind of like, oh, well, that kind of like drove him to kind of like, they, they saw that with Eddie, because Eddie believed that that thing could hurt it, Pennywise, so they're like, we had to bring the belief, and this is where I kind of get a little uh, confused, and kind of like, what? Because they take the belief, and poor Eddie is hurt, he is really, really hurt, and uh, they all start kind of doing the little schoolgirl thing. Yeah. Oh, you're small. There's other ways to make him small. Is yeah. What they said. Other ways of making him small. They're like, how are we gonna beat him? Make him small. And they're like, you're small. You're nothing. You're just a clown. So they start emotionally abusing him. They start bullying. Yeah. Him. Anyways. Just bullying him, and he's just tiny. Yeah, he starts. He's just shrinking. And then while he's shrinking, you know, Eddie's over there dying, you know, he starts shrinking and they take his heart and they just, and it really kind of, uh, anyway, so the ending, you know. Was anticlimactic. Yeah. Well, Eddie, unfortunately, passed. So, you know, you have the, you have Stanley, you have Eddie, Richie. And Eddie, like, through the film, they had a real, like, brotherly kind of bond. So, it was kind of, you know, really sad at the end when they kind of, you know, came out and, you know, defeated it and stuff. And But, yeah, I was not, huh. I'm going to go ahead and say that that was very, very, um, that was my issue with the film. And that's why it's hard for me to really talk about this film without spoiling it because I thought the ending was awful. <laughs> I did not like the ending. Although I like the film more than Mr. Crash here. <clears throat> I like the film. I give it a B, but if the ending was better, it would have had an A. And that says a lot because I understand that sequels aren't going to be as great as the first one. Of course not. It's a sequel. I mean, you can never, you know, you know, it's your first love. The movie's your first love, you know. It's, you love it, so that makes you go to the sequel. So you never love the sequel as much as you love the first one. But at the same point, you know, it would have been, the ending was better would have been an A. Hmm. I don't think the ending could have saved it. The ending was pretty lame. But the movie was just too long and too hit or miss for me. There was too much... Too much, it was confusing, and like like I said, they got them together, then they split up, and then they, they were, oh, I'll quit, and I quit, and I go this way, and I'm going this way, and then well, there wasn't enough Pennywise, there was too much bad CGI. We'll go back and watch it again, and you know what, now they're, and I was telling you, remember, I was like, oh, that's the last time you'll see Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise, and now they're like, oh, will they make an It 3? Oh, God, Which, no, they shouldn't make an It 3, but if they do, mm -hmm. the only reason they're doing that is to correct everything they did wrong in the second one. Well, they need to just have a longer version of uh, edited one, and we're about to get into that for a second, because I have some questions that I would like to go over with you, what you think. Oh, okay. Basically, I'm going to point out what my opinion are for the best and the worst things about the film. And to jump back on the point you were just talking about, It Chapter 3, I guess it would be called like It Chapter 3, the didn't know one. They just need to do a long, unedited version of just the whole thing. Of like, un, like no, just like if they, other than, re, why remake, why make a sequel when there's so much material they didn't use? Yeah. Just make a long, like, just make Make it a make it a, a whole mini series or something. Just put all of it in there. But anyways, back to uh, my opinion of uh, the best and worst things. I want to see if you agree with me. <laughs> see, the worst things. Okay, what you were saying. I think that would have worked if, like, what I said the first time, if they had filmed all of them at yeah. one time, kind of like mm -hmm. they can do with Lord of the Rings extended versions and mm -hmm. all that. But the but being that they filmed them at two completely different times and all that, I just I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd go for that. Yeah. And plus the second one is just already so long. It's almost, it's two hours and 49 minutes. It was a long That's time. like Titanic length. Here's going to be what I think are the best and the worst things. I want to hear what you have to think about it. And I want you to jump in on these as well, sir. Mm. After I burp. 
One of the best things of the film that I think made the film is the relationship between not Bev and Ben, but Eddie and Richie. That made the film. Like, I, I know there's other aspects, but that's one of the main components that I think made the film. The Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Like, that was just so funny. It was just hilarious. And throughout the film, you know, it was funny. And the part when Eddie is killed, Richie genuinely is hurt. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, this is, like, like Bill Hader, he was great in that role. And just the heartbreak. So, I think Richie and, Richie and Eddie relationship made. And especially the, uh, the, at the ending, you're finding out, guys, that you find out Richie is homosexual. It's kind of like, I honestly, I don't know if he had a love for Richie. Yeah, that's what I got away from it. Cause or I mean, the, uh, not Richie, Eddie, I'm sorry. Yeah, Eddie. Richie had you know, a good love for Richie. Because you know he was carving their initials yeah. into the thing, mm -hmm. and that's what, that's what I, kind of what I took away from it. But I'll, I'm, I'm with you. I, that was one of the aspects of the story that I did. I thought it was different, and I thought it was cool. One of the worst aspects of the film that I cannot stand is we just jumped on this thing the CGI CGI I could I couldn't I couldn't the ending with it is a spider and they brought back the fucking spider they brought back this spider like I'm sorry guys like I know a lot of people love that but that was like one of the attributes from the original 1990 miniseries I just couldn't with the spider it just wasn't ugh. it reminded me of Wild Wild West the giant Wild Wild West spider. I liked I liked uh, Pennywise as the spider more than I liked any of the other creatures that were in there. Yeah. All, that all had really long Tim Burton mm -hmm. <laughs> tongue, Beetlejuice like tongues Burton. for some yeah. reason, and maybe Large Marge from uh, mm -hmm. the Pee Wee. Pee-wee's Big Adventure, <laughs> but like the like the clay, it looked like claymation, like tongues and eyeballs, and yeah. they were just like those creatures. They look just, they look ridiculous to ridiculous. me. Ridiculous. Yeah, they just look ridiculous to me. It was took me way out of the movie. Like I said, I'm gonna revamp. The best best aspect is the humor. I love the humor, not just with Ben. Excuse me, I'm saying that I'm getting the names all mixed up, guys. Sorry, not just with Richie and Eddie, but just like all of it was really funny. Like, there's a few things that, like, Richie would just say, like, at the Chinese restaurant with the little boy. The little boy is like, oh, is this show time? And he's like, no, no. And the kid's like, he's like, how do you know? And they think it's it. They think it's it's Pennywise. And the kid's like, I want your stand-up comedy. And he's like, oh. He goes, you want to take a picture? And he goes, no, I'm okay. And he walks away. Like, it's so funny. Like, stuff like that happened. And it's just, it was really funny. So, anyways, that, do you agree? Yeah. yeah. Bill Hader was like the highlight of the entire movie for me. Yeah. His humor, his character, I just think he did. I think, and you know, there's some really good actors in the movie, and I was I was excited Bill Hader was in the movie, and I thought he really just did a great job. First part was, I realized that the film with him trying to get them to come to Derry to Pete Benny, Pete, gosh, guys, I'm sorry, I can't talk today. I've been, ugh, a million things going on at once. Half the film was trying to get them to go to defeat Pennywise, and then by the time you got them there, it was already ha it was already like what an hour yeah. and thirty minutes in, and it was like they like the the fight with Pennywise was like that long, and it, so I felt like it took too long to get there, and I know like these are things you said in the non spoiler review. But I still like the film. I just know there were some things that I just, it just took too long. Well, one of my favorite parts of the first movie, and what I think really worked, is the, that the kids come together as a group mm -hmm. to defeat Pennywise. And in this movie, you just didn't really see that. You saw for, it took forever for them to get back together. When they did get back together, some of them were like, oh, no, I, I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. out of here, too. Mm -hmm. And they finally get you then. So it's like not even getting them together at first. And then they are really back together as a group. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, okay, go find these tokens now. And they're like, mm -hmm. just split up the group. So like that took away like the aspect that the best aspect everybody wanted to see. They just wanted to see, get to it already. We want to see these characters get back together. And we want to mm -hmm. see them kick Pennywise's ass. That's all we want to say, you mm -hmm. know? We want to see them come together, and we want to see them kick Pennywise's ass. And there was too much other stuff in between. The best point was the flashbacks. Just showing the re... And I felt like that's what the film did, too. Is it kind of... It 
when you watch the film, you're kind of sitting there and you're like, oh, wow, I miss the kids. Yeah. That's no, I miss the kids. And when they, whenever, you know, you show the adults kind of, like, going apart, it re-showed, like, the connections with the kids. It kind of revamped that part of it. Like, them going back and showing the kids and stuff, I thought was kind of, like, it was, it made me feel the film again. So maybe that's why I'm, I'm like, loving the film as more than other people because, you know, I saw all the kids and I was like, oh, I don't think if they had the kids as much, I don't think it would have been as much. But, yeah. Anyways, yeah, so the flashbacks showing the connection of the kids, redefining, you know, re-showing, you know, who they were and stuff, I thought that was pretty positive. Yeah. I told you, I told you uh, that when they showed the kids, it kind of made me miss the kids. Mm -hmm. But that's another reason they should have filmed them all at one time, because all those kids are going through that awkward age where they grow really fast. And so <laughs> there were obviously going to be differences in the first movie and then, like, you know, a couple years later at the mm -hmm. second one, because that's just the age those kids are, where they're kind of, you can tell, you know, like, mm -hmm. hey, you're, you see them one day and they're like, you know, three feet tall, and then they come back next summer and they're grown two feet. I mean, that's just how it is. I won't keep harping on the fact that I wish that they had filmed it all at one time and made a more cohesive film out of the series, like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, the ending with Spider, I just felt like there was, I just felt like the ending was a total, like, I didn't, I, I'm glad they didn't go with the whole, um, you know, extravagant, uh, I can't even talk to an extravagant ending that my friend told me about in the It book, the, um, uh, mind stuff and the, the rate, anyways, I'm glad they didn't do that, but I really, really would have liked them to kind of, like, dive into the turtle aspect of the story and kind of, you know, see, because they, they dived into it somewhat into, um, the first one, they kind of showed the symbolism of the turtle with the Georgie and everything, and the turtle eyes, and, like, I wish they kind of, I wish it would have been more, I don't know. I wish it would have been more different, yet kind of in the same grounds. So yeah. More into the actual mythology of the yeah. creature. Well, you know, and I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. We could, they talked about the dead lights again, mm -hmm. but the only but they didn't. Sh the only time they showed them was like in a flashback, right? Yeah. So you kind of thought they were going, oh, this is going to be a bigger thing in this movie, mm -hmm. but then the only time they showed it was a flashback from the first mm -hmm. movie when he was. But, yeah. Well, we always said it once. We could be wrong, guys. We could be wrong, but that's what we remember. We only seen it once, though, and I'm just going to revamp. It was a three-hour movie. A lot to remember. It's a lot to remember. Like it was And somebody had to go get popcorn, right? Right? Ugh, man, because it was a long movie. And take a whiz. Mm -hmm. That kind of concludes our opinion of it, our positives and negatives. I have to say the positives are going to be the acting, and I thought it was good direction. Like, I really did. Like, Andy Muschietti, I liked his directing. I'm not really too fond with the story of the movie per se, but the film looked great. And there was a few scenes that I had a hard time watching. Of course, we we're talking about the children dead scene, the kill scenes of the kids. I had an issue. The maze thing with the little boy, I, you can ask him, I... He kills kids. That's what he yeah. does. I know, but Maybe I Maybe this isn't the movie for Well, me. no, the kid, he grabs the kid, and the kid explodes in blood. Like, the kid just explodes, and then the little girl got her face ripped. Anyways, yeah, guys, you guys can't handle kids. Well, if you're watching this, obviously you've seen the movie. You can't handle kids being uh, eaten and ripped apart. Don't watch this film, because I was like this. Anyways, yeah, guys, so there it is. So, you guys agree? You guys disagree? Sorry that we're doing a long video talking about it. Long but, movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a three hour movie, so we have a lot to talk about. This is a spoiler review, so forgive me for spending 45 minutes talking about a three hour movie. Anyways, I'm going to try to cut it as low as I can. But, anyways, guys, there you go. I still give it a C. I might watch it again eventually. Do not make a third one. If anyone has a right. The studios can hear me and take my opinion for anything. Don't make a third one because if you make the third one, you're just going to be trying to correct the stuff you did wrong in the second mm -hmm. one, and that's admitting that you made a shitty movie with the second right? one. Right? Why don't you guys just remake Golden Years? Golden Years. Yeah. Why didn't I like to see Andy Machete just make a different movie now? You know, I want to see yeah. what else he's got. Something that's not based on a Stephen King. Right. Just something original, you know. There you go. Make a Mama too. Hey, absolutely. There you go. Yeah. I might watch that.
Thanks again for watching. And do you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? Have you guys uh, liked it? Do you guys think we're being too harsh on it? Do you guys think there's something we missed out? Let us know. Comment below. Below. <laughs> and guys, we seek approval. So do not forget to like and subscribe. Anyways, guys, see it chapter two. If you're, you know, excited about it, don't. It's it's good. It's, watch it. Watch it. It's not that bad. I mean, I have my it's not negative. That bad. No, I have my negatives. He hate. He doesn't like it. I don't hate it. I give yeah. it a C. I still yeah. give it a C. So guys, wait till it comes out on Redbox. Yeah. There's probably. probably other movies out there you can see. Anyways, guys, until next time. Bye. Salesman? Yeah, like, like, no, he was a person that, like, he was an insurance tech, tech, technical uh, insurance person. I don't remember what he was. Yeah. I remember he's three hours long. I kind of forgot some stuff. <laughs>